Hello, everyone. Um, it's uh, very nice uh, finally to have in-person conference. Um, it was two years with no real events happening. So thanks, everyone, for coming here. So I see here is a remote to control my slides. So I'm going to give a talk today uh, about optimizing Magento backend performance, not really related to frontend one, because for frontend we have Hiva. And for backend uh, part of the system, uh, we need to take a look how can we improve things for our projects. So um, my talk is called Optimizing Magento by Preloading Data. Uh, a little bit of a disclaimer. This is not a talk about cache. So we are not going to talk about uh, caching stuff in Magento. Basically, what uh, this talk is about, about uncached versions of the pages and how can we actually make them faster and uh, uh, reduce our resources spent uh, in Magento and backend servers in order to serve the pages instead of just uh, rising number of uh, servers <laughs> exponentially. So a little bit about the cache pitfalls because in my opinion cache should be used only for scaling. So where you really have a lot of visitors, you shouldn't nev you should never use cache for uh, actually performance optimization. Because if you are using cache for performance optimizations, it means there is a high probability that your cache will be stale. And at some point, uh, people will just hit your uncached versions. For instance, I had a customer who just added some random parameter to some newsletter campaign. And instead of hitting a cached page of the product, they were hitting with uh, 10,000 concurrent users uncached versions of the product that basically made the website go down. So combination of different variables that are going to invalidate our cache, like for instance, the customer group, uh, the customer location, uh, the language the customer choose, all of those affect our cache variations. So if, if you want to see a page um, being all the time cached, you need to pre-warm those caches. And this is not that easy to do. Also, if you're going to update something, uh, in the Magento backend, like you go into the admin panel, you modify a product price, you will need to clear every single cache entry uh, that is stored somewhere on some server. So first of all, it's going to be a slow, painful process in the admin panel because Magento have to communicate with all of those systems. And another thing is that uh, you would also have to... Uh, uh, you would also won't see the new version that fast. Also, uh, there is an issue with number of memory required for caching. So any one of you ever had an issue with Redis running out of memory? Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so at least two, two, two people uh, had uh, an issue with that. So the problem is when your um, when your uh, amount of layout handles exceeds amount, and if someone didn't know, Magento has a unique version of the cache for layout for every single product, every single category out there, and every single store view, <laughs> additionally to that. Um, and there is also another issue with the cache that I call cache onion. So you peel one layer of the cache, but behind it there is other kind of a cache that caches other data. So if you want to invalidate that onion, it's even more uh, issues waiting to happen. So usually you need to keep uh, layers of cache very simple. So if you have a cache, you should have only one level of a cache. Uh, you, you shouldn't cache separately product prices, separately product data, and then on top you have a full page cache. It, it's, it makes things inefficient. So the question is, do we really need caching in the end? Of course, the answer is yes, but only when we want to scale our system. So when we know that we are definitely going to have a version of our web page uh, that is going to be served to 1,000 concurrent users that is going to be the same, then yeah, you save server resources. But in the end, you need to make sure that people who hit uncached pages, they also receive a good experience. So let's take a look at the Magento uh, standard category page. Uh, anyone want to guess uh, how many parts here are actually cached? Anyone? 
Three. One. Okay, so uh, there is a lot of them. <laughs> so if you take a look, there is a top menu. Top menu is always cached. And also another issue with the top menu that before some version of Magento, it was even creating a separate version of the venue for every single category. So every single category in Magento had own version of the top menu. However, the content is the same. Uh, then uh, every single price of the product on a category page is cached as well. Like it's put in a Redis cache in order to save some time. We will take a look at it, what actually is the problem there. And then I don't know why Magento uh, caches a copyright. So if you take a look, all rights reserved, it should be cached. I, I don't know why, but somehow <laughs> it just gets cached. And another one is, of course, our privacy policy. Uh, blog and customer service links, so it's a part of the footer. It's also placed in a cache. From these things, uh, we don't need, at, at least we don't need price cache. It doesn't make sense because this one going to change a lot, and it means that if you have this kind of a cache within a full page cache, you would need to invalidate the price cache, and then you need to invalidate the full page cache. But what happens in the reality that Magento invalidates all caches at the same time. And if you have a clustered setup, you could have some nodes that would still have an old cache being not yet cleared up. And you would have a full page cached versions being generated from that stale cache. And you can not be sure that you have the right data. So it doesn't make sense from point of view even of validity of your front end. So what kind of problem does cache solve? First of all, it solves the problem of concurrency. So as more people visit your website, the more people you can just get some data from memory and they're going on the way instead of generating the pages from the beginning. So let's take a look at the top menu issue in Magento itself. Uh, if you ever had like 300 categories Magento store, you would know that when you show the top menu, for every single category out there, Magento loads separately from the database a URL for that specific category, where one single database query. And even through, you thought like, OK, I'll just put this block into ESI include. However, Magento, when it's using Varnish or Fastly or whatever full page cache service you are using for, Magento still renders that block and still does it for every single category page. So you don't really save any time even by putting it into ESI because Magento still does bad stuff for you. So another issue with Magento is product list. As I explained, uh, there is price uh, rendering. And the price rendering triggers a lot of database queries for configurable products, uh, for even for simple products. So imagine like you want to just show a minimal price of the product. And instead of using price indexes, Magento contacts database tries to load the data from uh, catalog sales rules, um, sorry, from catalog ru price rules, and then uh, tries to ac also access data from tier prices in order to render the price at the real time. So it doesn't use indexes. However, you run indexation all the time when you update a product. So this is kind of weird. Maybe there was some bug and some developer in the core decided instead of fixing the issue with the indexer, we'll just recalculate the price at the front end. Uh, so all those uh, issues I show you, they all can be uh, brought under the umbrella of load in a loop. Or in other communities, it's called n plus 1 problem. Uh, what is n plus 1 problem? n plus 1 problem is a thing when, let's say, you do one database query to retrieve list of data. And for that database query, you execute for every single entry in that list, you execute another database query. So it means like for Basically, you just uh, scale number of your database queries with number of results you receive. And Magento has a lot of such problems. Um, I don't know why do they exist in Magento, but I suspect uh, that it's all about the complexity of the system. Because in Magento 1, those problems also existed. But in Magento 2, they, they increased in amount, uh, mostly I think because the architecture is unclear. Like you have so many layers till you get to the database. Uh, 
you would even notice where this database query came from. And you, you don't see as a developer that, okay, if, if I access an entity repository, it will basically gonna trigger another database query, load another full model or whatever. So another thing that I see as a problem, it's actually promotion of uh, singular services usage by Magento. So they tell, get something through entity repository and you are good because it's stable, it's API compliant, um, and, and so on. So you have this side of the things and people just try to use it without thinking maybe there is something better to use, like maybe just create own service, access database directly and do stuff. Also, another issue as I see is that the system was designed not from the top down, but from the bottom up. So they were thinking about the small services in the beginning instead of looking what is my entry point, what I'm trying to render, and from there try to gather all the data you need. But can we fix these kind of problems without actually modifying the core? The answer of, is of course yes, because otherwise there would be no talk like that, right? Uh, so one of the things you can do in a smart way, like you can observe the load events, like every single uh, list of the data that is loaded in Magento is usually loaded through the collection and you can observe that event and you can preload the data that you anticipate Magento services will use and just customize Magento in such a way that uh, that op ex expensive operation won't be triggered because you already have data for that service. Uh, so you can load the data and then you can create a plugin around it uh, with a service that triggers it. Uh, however, like building it yourself for every single product is project is kind of cumbersome. So there is a module for that and you can access it here. It's already uh, 1.0 release. Um, you can already use it in your production environments. It's compatible with most recent Magento version. Um, just take a picture or uh, look at for the slides later. It's called Magento 2 Product Preloader. Um, I use it almost on every single project uh, I work for. So what, what this uh, uh, module does, it provides you an interface to create your own data loader, which is already hooked in into all of the Magento uh, system itself. So you can implement uh, a data loader interface and there is one thing called, uh, does it work? Okay. Uh, there is one thing called is applicable and this is applicable tells, okay, is this data applicable to shopping cart? Is this data is applicable to product list? And so on. So it gives you the type of the collections that Magento tries to load of products. And then you can decide, is your data loader going to be triggered? Then you can call, uh, the, then the module calls load method where you have a scope filter and list of products for which you need to access the data. Then you need just to register the service. Uh, then uh, you can use the load service as a dependency in order to access the data that you loaded. So here is an example with configurable products and it's related to uh, price retrieval and inventory checks. Uh, we are going to take a look, I think, at inventory module here, uh, but there is already a module that implements everything and it's available in the end of the slides. So our target goal to remove the price uh, retrieval of uh, checks from Magento, like all the database operations related to that, we want to remove retrieval of inventory uh, checks as well. We want to preload this data and then we want to achieve less than 90 database queries on a category page. Uh, being done. And then uh, we also want to make sure that uh, for the simplicity reasons uh, in this specific example we don't we ignore for some data like prices we ignore availability of the simple product but you can add it in your real projects otherwise it would not fit on the slides. So here is uh, a small uh, example, so we have this configurable price data loader. Yeah, so this is what we are loading. Uh, we have, um, I probably have to step here to show it to you better. So we have um, our configurable price loader. We have this data key. Data key is used just to 
stores the data for us for later. Uh, we'll use it in DI uh, configurations. Then we have a uh, resource connection being passed as a dependency. Uh, then we have our load method in which we're going to execute database queries based on the input data. Then we have this is applicable check. And is applicable check uh, here, you see uh, it compares type to type list. And because uh, type list, it indicates that this is all the products that are rendered and going to use price index. So we just save us from the situation to not preload the data for shopping carts. So we want to make sure that in shopping carts, the data is still used uh, as most up to date. So then we, we're going to implement our method. First, we retrieve the list of products. We iterate through them. We check that each of the product is a configurable. Uh, if there is no configurable products, we don't do anything. We don't want to execute database queries if there is no relevant products. Uh, then we uh, do some, um, some housekeeping by creating variables with the table names because Magento needs to uh, resolve uh, the full table name based on connection and uh, the table name. So it depends if it prefix. And then uh, we do our database query. And database query is basically very simple. We just get the data from the price index table by joining uh, the relation table of configurable product. And then what we do, we do just an aggregation by entity ID. So this is entity ID is parent ID from the relation table. And then we take as a price, a minimal price from the price column. And as a final price, the minimum price from the final price column of assigned simple products. And then we group by parent ID. And we add a condition for parent IDs from the configurable product IDs we've gathered previously. Then we add a filter by customer group ID to make sure that the prices are shown for the correct customer group. And then we filter by also website ID. So all the data is already available for you. And then we use small trick uh, with a database uh, connection from Zen framework called fetch a sock. Uh, fetch a sock uh, basically takes the first column that is returned from your result set and uses it as associative key in an array. So you don't need to generate this array yourself. It's already prepared for you for later use. Uh, then we create a plugin around resolving of the price for a configurable product. Uh, this is uh, added to configurable price resolver. Uh, so you have uh, this product ID uh, re retrieved. Then we use the load service has method. And we check our data key. You remember the constant we created previously. Uh, then we pass this product ID to check, is there a data for this one? If there is no data, we just proceed with original functionality. If there is data, we just get this final price value uh, and return it as a float uh, there. So that's basically all the customizations you need to do to fix a very simple performance issue of uh, configurable product price resolution on category page. Uh, here is a uh, uh, DI configuration for this thing. So you see I just added loaders into load service. Uh, this is uh, the class that I've created. And here is the plugin itself. Uh, the link to this module is at the end of the slides. So here are some results. So after I implemented those modules, uh, the runtime uh, decreased by 34%. But what's more important, if you can see it here, the number of database queries dropped dramatically. Uh, and you can access uh, this one online as well as a comparison of what was happening there by the link. So like by 75%, I reduced the load in the database. Uh, so this is uh, the data set of, I, I think I run it on uh, 200K, uh, 200K simple products with uh, at, at least uh, like 10,000 of configurables. So all the simple products are assigned to configurables in that case. So it's kind of big. Uh, and uh, yeah, the total input output time dropped dramatically as well. So what's more important is not about the single uh, operation, but the distribution of the performance improvement 
in the load uh, scenario. So what I did, I created only five users on my local machine in order to check how fast uh, it would respond. And I did few few variations. So I did a cached price, uncached price, optimized, and optimized with no identities checks. So the cached price, it's the part where Magento tries to optimize performance by caching a price of the product output on category page. And you can see that the minimum response time is quite good with the cache. However, we can see that optimized part for the price retrieval is even faster than getting the data from a cache, because each single cache call is actually an I.O. operation you talk with another server. However, when you do just a simple database query for the list of products, it's much more faster than requesting a cache entry. Uh, another thing, it's if it's completely uncached price, you, you can see, yeah, it's kind of slow with minimum response time, like it tends to go to 400 milliseconds. Probably it's not that slow as majority of the product projects you see, because I saw pro projects where they consider two, two seconds response time from a server is a good thing. However, in my opinion, it should be a, uh, uh, going in the direction of 200 milliseconds, honestly. So uh, here we have uh, uh, the uncached price, and you can see that the maximum response time on cached and uncached price is almost the same. Uh, why the maximum response time with cash price is kind of high, because Magento has additional log checks for cash, so you can see higher response time in the end. However, the, if you take a look at the average, uh, the cached result and uncached result is basically the same, so there is basically no need in that price cache at all. And uh, P95 experience of people who will randomly click on uncached versions of the pages is quite consistent as well. So if you scale it to more users, you will see worse data in cached and uncached variations because Magento implements also locking of the cache entries when it tries to update. So uh, key takeaways uh, from this talk for you before we jump into the small live coding session uh, to show you how to uh, find the bottleneck itself and try to fix it with this module. Uh, you, you need to understand that you need to avoid using cache for data within a cached page. So if you already have a full page cache, it doesn't make sense to uh, have a cache within it because the cache already will be cached and you need to just optimize uncached performance itself. Then you need to make sure that you are using only one database query per set of data. You need to profile your pages. You need to check, hey, here I see that for every single result, there is definitely more than one database query executed. Uh, another advice, if you have a full page cache, try to disable block HTML cache because Magento puts a lot of things in block HTML, and if you have full page cache like Varnish or Fastly, it doesn't make sense because it only adds additional layer of indirection when you try to clear a cache and customer doesn't understand why there is no prices being shown that he just updated in the uh, admin panel. And use Profiler to find bottlenecks. Uh, for the future plans, uh, kind of related to the performance work, um, I want to make this module uh, more kind of plug and play. So I want to make it available for the composer so anyone can just uh, use it as a dependency. Right now, it's just shown as a proof of concept we can do. So uh, it will be growing more and more uh, to uh, have uh, more core performance issues being fixed. Uh, then I want to create also preloaders for um, MSI quantity retrieval for shopping cart and checkout because there is a lot of checks that are completely redundant. And uh, I did it on uh, some projects uh, already specifically for the customer, but it's specific use case, and I want to make it a generalized uh, solution. Uh, then uh, I also want to... Today, actually, we're going to work on F FEC identifiers for composite products. It's going to be a very quick uh, way to do it. And then we have also a preloader module for categories, which needs to be done because categories also have some issues, like you saw with top menu uh, with URLs. 
And another thing I think that is frustration for a lot of developers, I want to rewrite setup DI compile to make it much more faster. And uh, there's already some people in the community who are interested in that part. So here are the links to all of the uh, modules you'd like to see. So you can take a picture of it. And um, now it's time to do a small example with the current recent Magento version, uh, how can we profile and find performance issues with Magento? Okay. So here we are. I have Magento 2.4, uh, the most. Oh, uh, just a moment. Uh, I think I need to mirror my display. You see, there is no performance issues, right? <laughs> yeah, just a moment. I think I need to mirror this place. Mirror, I think. Yeah. Did it work? Yeah, great. Linux is a very fun thing to do development in, but for presentations and other stuff, it's not so fun and looks like we have a very nice uh, screen resolution. But let's keep it simple. So here we have a simple module uh, that we're going to uh, quickly implement. Uh, there is a loader and a plugin. And in order to see what's happening here, I don't know actually if we're going to... Oh. <laughs> so that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, can I open it up and can I mute my notifications? Yeah, great. So now we can go and go into the Magento Luma. Uh, you see it's quite fast, but it's fast because I have uh, SSD with PCI Express 4 gen uh, speeds. So database and everything was working faster. In production, it would be much more slower. Uh, now I'm going to go into this category. Uh, and I'm going to increase the number of products because the performance issues are better seen when you have more products. And usually, honestly, in my experience, like majority of the merchants who are running Magento stores, they usually show a lot of products because they don't want uh, customers uh, to click through categories. They want just customers to find the right product right away. So showing 20 product, 12 products even, uh, like it's, it's a bad idea, honestly. So let's uh, go with a profiler. Let's disable aggregation. Uh, I use Blackfire, but I saw Tidaways. It's also a very nice alternative. There are some open source alternatives for profiler. It's just to show you what you can do with it. So. I'm just profiling this page. It takes some time under profile, of course. It's going to generate me uh, the report, uh, what's happening. And yeah, it takes some time because there's a lot of calls. So here, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't show a full toolbar. But you can see here, for instance, that Oh, what did I do? I, I think I disabled some stuff. <laughs> In a different way. Okay. Uh, let's see what kind of database queries are there. Okay. So we have something that I didn't see uh, before. It seems like I and advertently disabled the modules that I was working with. Um, so here is uh, the part related to configure product data. OK, somehow this one doesn't work, but we can check later. But that always happens with live presentation. So you, you can see here, for instance, uh, there is a call 
to wait a moment where is it yeah well let's do another profile I don't understand it probably I just cleared some some stuff off up let's open it again maybe inadvertently I enabled again uh, this uh, very famous uh, swatches module or something like that but you probably saw already that there is a lot of uh, issues uh, already with the database yeah so now it, it looks like what I wanted to show you so here you can see that there is uh, 25 uh, database queries being uh, executed from uh, this catalog product super link table and it just uh, gonna uh, put additional load in our database and we can easily fix this part uh, by uh, creating our module and in our module we just have this small placeholder here called preload entities and here in the loader we just can write a database query to fix uh, this problem because what we need to do we just need to access the list of all of the uh, simple products uh, from uh, this configurable product itself and it's very easy to do by copying some parts of the code of course so we have already some code here so we can copy the code related to uh, configurable products itself right and we can pass it here Co copy and paste is the best uh, helper of developer uh, then uh, we can uh, copy also uh, the base of uh, the database query as well uh, the only thing we are not going to use as uh, a price index we're just going to use the super link itself and we're going to select from relation table and that's it uh, we're going to select uh, parent id and product id itself and we're gonna do a work condition on relation dot parent uh, ID in uh, configurable product IDs itself uh, I think I need to use here this relation resource connection get connection and then select and that's basically it. then we just need to do it for each for a select with query uh, as row and we are just gonna return back the result and result is going to be an associative array in, in this case uh, I have to do it like this I cannot use any helper methods because I have more than one uh, entry for specific uh, parent product so I'm just gonna do something like that and uh, return back the product ID itself so this table has very simple structure it has parent ID and product ID and that's basically it and this is gonna be a result of my loader and then I would need to add this loader to load service and here we have loaders and uh, item we're gonna give it a unique name it should be the same as we're gonna use here so configurable child IDs because we will use it as a key to access the data uh, I forgot to specify XSI type and XSI type is an array and here exercise type is object and here we're gonna specify our configurable products 
uh, configurable child product IDs. So that's basically a registration of our uh, service. And then we're going to disable the standard Magento uh, plugin. And what we're going to do, we're going to run a quick recompilation because without recompilation, Magento won't enable it. Uh, now, when I'm going to profile stuff after recompilation is finished, um, I, I don't know, uh, Kuba, do I still have a little bit of time? Yes. To show. We can we can we can extend a little bit uh, this part. Have a short coffee break later and switch to discussion. So let's okay. let's let's finish this part. Have a coffee break and yeah. then we'll have a shorter discussion. So r right now, unfortunately, I cannot predict how long it will take to compile <laughs> all the classes in Magento. Um, but let's hope everything works first time, and I don't need to adjust anything in the loader <laughs> and in dependencies. So. Now let's refresh this page. Very nice. <laughs> Very convenient. <laughs> so I, I think I did some mistake here. Just let's let's probably take a look at the what Magento suggests. Uh, tail uh, NSF for, uh, project to our exceptional work probably. Okay. Uh, that's not my exception. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, so that's probably debug. <laughs> also not very helpful, honestly. <laughs> Magenta development is fun. <laughs> If you didn't notice it yet. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, a huge stack trace with very convenient names of the methods. You know, like you can easily find out that you can understand anything what's happening here. A, a lot of <laughs> calls in the stack trace. So let's see. Calling plugins, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's see what's in the top, right? Return value must be a type of boolean. So that's probably what is the problem because I didn't implement another method that I should have done. So very good. Uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity, we're just going to always return true. We are not going to check anything. And let's uh, refresh a page and let's see what's going to happen. Oh, okay. Uh, let's let's take a look again. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, can I s scroll somehow it faster in Linux? Looks like not that much. I have to do it with just pressing pressing the button. Okay. Uh, and let, let's expect that type property must be accessed, must not be accessed to be before initialization. What a nice thing. Because I did another prob problem, you know, like I didn't. Uh, generate a constructor for it. And here I will use some magic. Uh, so I will use resource connection, resource connection, and I'm just going to initialize properties. Okay. Unfortunately, it means I didn't do a good job with uh, initial compilation because Magento didn't say constructor, so it didn't generate the proper configuration and everything else. Yes, let's spare program. Okay, can you speed up the process? No. <laughs> 
That's the answer that Magento tells us, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's quite funny because uh, the CPU that I have here, it's uh, uh, the most recent uh, Intel CPU. That is kind of fast, like it's 10 nanometers one, so should be good. But, you know, it's, it's never good for Magento. Okay, so we finally have our page. Everything is working. Uh, let's uh, profile a result here and let's see what's going on. See, so yeah, it, it looks quite good, honestly. Like, I didn't disable um, aggregation, but you already saw that it was not bad. Let's see how many database uh, queries there are. I expect uh, not a lot because I created a loader, but I didn't yet implement my plugin. So here we are. Let's look at the timeline. Let's look at the database. So we have how many database queries? 89, right? Did we achieve below 90 database queries on a category page? Yes. That's the result we were aiming for. And yeah, it's quite good. There is still some stuff that left to optimize, like you can get rid of these two parts here as well, but it's part of the AV module, not part of the catalog module. So now the most important part, it's plugin. So plugin now needs to use a load service in order to uh, retrieve uh, the identities of the child product. So let's do that. Uh, we have a load service, we're gonna check has for product, uh, is it here, like that, it's called subject, okay, so subject get ID, and then we're gonna call our configurable product uh, IDs, yeah, child preloader, and we're gonna use this constant uh, we've defined before, and here we need to check if this data exists, and if it exists, we're just gonna return back uh, identities uh, merged together with that data for that product. Uh, array um, merge, I think, uh, identities, and then we're gonna use this load service, get uh, subject, get ID, and then configurable child product data key. And I think it's correct PHP syntax. So let's hope our page works. No. Karen? <laughs> okay. So I think uh, there is just some stupid fatal error or something like that. Uh, or not really. I don't see actually here fatal errors. Probably I, as always, Magento tells us that get ID is gonna return a switch type, integer. However, Magento returns a string, so we have to typecast if we have a good type system set up for ourselves. So this is another issue that I run all the time into. That's why I like Magento. It always gives you a challenge. Okay, so now it's done. We did optim small optimization for category page where we optimized the way how uh, child product IDs are retrieved uh, when you generate uh, cache tags for full page cache. So, and we achieved uh, below 90 database queries on the category page. So uh, maybe you can put up the last slide one more time, please. So here, here are uh, the links to the module and an example that is used in these slides. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, you're free to ask, right? I think, <clears throat> I think we can move questions to the discussion part. OK. Because uh, uh, thank, you, thank you, Ivan, for, for, this, for this part. As we can see, uh, Magento development is always full, full of adventures.